Out of all of the proposed benefits from taking vitamin K2, there's one that's got the strongest evidence and is the reason why I take 90 micrograms of vitamin K2. But a tantalizing new study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology suggests that there might be an additional benefit from taking vitamin K2. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin, and it's named after the German word coagulation, spelt with a K, because it was thought that vitamin K was only useful for clotting. But the health benefits of this micronutrient have been shown to extend beyond just blood clotting. While vitamin K1 primarily works in the liver, vitamin K2 is redistributed around the body and activates a group of proteins called GLA proteins. These proteins are thought to help keep our calcium in our bones, as opposed to our other organs. But before we go through this new study, we need to address some controversy. If vitamin K2 does indeed help keep our calcium in our bones, what evidence do we have that vitamin K2 helps to strengthen our bones and reduce fractures? Because while we've got a meta-analysis published in 2006 claiming that vitamin K does help to prevent fractures and strengthen bones, many of the individual trials that were included in that analysis have been retracted because of problems with their methods. And subsequent trials have also been retracted, again because of problems with the study methods. You can see that this area is not without controversy. Luckily though, we do have some robust trials. For example, we have this one published in 2009. It was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. But interestingly, it found that the vitamin K supplements, they didn't improve bone strength. The trial used the MK4 version of vitamin K2, which we'll talk about later in the video, at quite a high dose of 45 milligrams daily, and all participants received daily calcium and vitamin D supplements. So why did the study fail, and why am I still excited about vitamin K2's effects on bone strength? Well, this study only ran for 12 months, which when you're looking at bone strength, that's a really short duration. Plus, it used the MK4 version of vitamin K2, which is not the preferred version, and it used an extremely extremely high dose. And if you contrast that to a 2013 study that ran for three years and used the MK7 version of vitamin K2, we see very different results. For this study, the authors used a much more reasonable 180 microgram dose of vitamin K2, and we can see significant improvements in the age-related decline in bone mineral density, both in the lumbar spine and the femoral neck, so the hip bone. As such, the European Food Safety Authority has approved a health claim for vitamin K, noting that a cause and effect relationship has been established between the dietary intake of vitamin K and the maintenance of normal bone. So we do have evidence that vitamin K2 can help keep the calcium in our bones, but that begs the question, if we can use vitamin K2 to keep the calcium in our bones, does that mean we can use vitamin K2 to prevent calcium buildup in other parts of our body that it shouldn't build up, for example the valve in our heart or our blood vessels. Let's start by addressing the heart valve question before we look at the new study that looked at blood vessel health. As we age, many of us will start to develop calcifications around our heart valves, hardening them not what we want. So in 2022, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial was done, and it was published in the Journal of Circulation. It was looking to see whether vitamin K2 supplements reduce the calcification buildup around the aortic valve. The trial was conducted at four separate Danish hospitals, and compared 720 micrograms of vitamin K2 in the form of MK7 plus vitamin D to a placebo, and the study ran for 24 months. But surprisingly, there was no treatment effect seen. There was no difference between the placebo group and the treatment group. Even in a subgroup analysis, where the scientists were looking to see whether there would be certain groups that may benefit from vitamin K2 supplements, there was no treatment effect seen. But while that study result is very disappointing, it's a different story for blood vessel health. We got the first hints that vitamin K2 may be able to improve blood vessel health from observational studies such as this one. It followed just under 5,000 people for a 7 year period, and it observed that the people who had the higher intakes of vitamin K2 had lower rates of all-cause death rates and heart disease. But it's important to remember that that was just an observational study. Many different confounding variables can skew the results from an observational study. What we need are randomized controlled trials. Well, in 2015, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of the MK7 version of vitamin K2 showed that it did improve arterial stiffness in women, and the dose used in the study was 180 micrograms. But now let's look at the newly published study. It was performed by the same group of people who did the aortic valve study. 
They started by measuring the calcium buildup in the blood vessels and then split the participants into two groups, one receiving the placebo and the other group receiving vitamin K2 and vitamin D. After a two-year period, there appeared to be no difference in the progression of the calcium buildup in the blood vessels between the vitamin K group and the placebo, which sounds initially disappointing, but then you read a bit further. During the two-year study period, the calcium buildup in the placebo group was 254 units, whereas in the vitamin K2 group, it was only 203 units. So yes, this didn't reach statistical significance, but there's a strong trend towards improvement. So the authors reanalyzed their results, and if they only included participants with a calcium score of above 400, then there was a significant difference between the placebo group and the vitamin K2 group. Which sounds incredibly exciting, but we need to be careful. Calcium buildup in our blood vessels is generally a late stage finding of atherosclerosis, or the process of blockages developing in our blood vessels. So let me backtrack for a second. When blockages start to develop in our blood vessels, the body tries to stabilize those blockages by laying down calcium. So if we're interfering with that calcium buildup, will that mean that our blood vessel blockages become unstable and can rupture and cause heart attacks? That's an important safety consideration. Which is why this study also looked at the progression of non-calcified plaque buildup or non-calcified blockages in our blood vessels. So in the placebo group during the two-year study period, it progressed by 46 units, whereas in the vitamin K2 group, there was actually a decrease in the amount of plaque volume. To further explore safety, the authors found that in the placebo group, 8% of the participants experienced a worsening of their blood vessel blockages, whereas that number was only 4.5% in the vitamin K2 and vitamin D group. So I've gone through a lot of information, now let's try and pull it all together because it's incredibly exciting. For people that already had significant calcium buildup in their blood vessels, it seems that vitamin K2 reduced that calcium progression. But because this process of calcification is thought to stabilize vulnerable soft plaque, the authors did additional analyses to make sure that vitamin K2 wasn't causing harm. The analysis showed that the non-calcified blockages in the blood vessels progressed in the placebo group, while in the vitamin K2 group there was a small shrinkage of those blood vessel blockages. Moreover, there was a significant reduction in the safety events in the vitamin K2 group compared to placebo. Overall, the study provides tantalizing evidence that we might be able to use vitamin K2 supplements to prevent calcium buildup in our blood vessels. But while this is exciting, it's not a done deal yet and multiple studies are going on right now to confirm or disprove these findings. For example, two ongoing Danish studies will hopefully contribute to more knowledge about the effect of vitamin K2 supplementation. One study is looking at whether vitamin K2 supplements can reduce the progression of calcium buildup in our blood vessels over a three-year period. And another trial is looking at high-risk people who have already got significant calcium buildup in their blood vessels. In conclusion, this study found that vitamin K2 supplements for high-risk individuals seem to reduce the progression of calcium buildup in the blood vessels, but it's important to note that this study represents novel, interesting and hypothesis generating findings that need to be further studied and investigated. But the signs are looking positive. Now when you're looking at the vitamin K2 research, you may see other claims like anti-cancer or anti-inflammatory, but when I looked at the research, these claims lacked evidence, so for me they are not reasons why I supplement with vitamin K2. Let's now have a look at safety and then I'll go through why I take the MK7 version of vitamin K2. According to the NIH supplement database, no adverse events have been associated with vitamin K2 consumption from food or supplements. But there are important interactions with blood thinners, specifically warfarin, so make sure to check with your own doctor first. The recommended daily intake for vitamin K1 is 120 micrograms, but no recommendations have been made for vitamin K2. We lack the research. So personally, I prefer to use the lower dose of 90 micrograms while we wait for that further research to come available. Plus, while vitamin K1 is found in leafy green vegetables, vitamin K2 is primarily found in fermented products such as natto and cheese. So depending on your diet, it can be a bit difficult to get vitamin K2, which is another reason why I chose to supplement with vitamin K2. In terms of why I chose the MK7 version of vitamin K2, it's because out of all of the other versions, it's the most efficiently absorbed and exhibits the greatest bioavailability. It's also got the longest half-life of all of the different forms, meaning that it sticks around in your body for longer. 
To summarize, I take 90 micrograms of vitamin K2 as part of the multivitamin and mineral called microvitamin that I designed. Now it's important to note that just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. Please make sure to speak with your own doctor first. I created microvitamin so that it was easier for me to take all of the specific supplements that I wanted to take, including vitamin D, magnesium and zinc. I'm here to present the research to you and what I'm personally doing in response to that research and should have absolutely no bearing on what you choose to do with your own health. And if you wanted to explore a severely underrated supplement that I also take, make sure to check out this next video here. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel.